What is up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Unusual Suspects. I'm your host, Vincent O'Shawn. I don't even know why I have to say at this point. You guys know who I am. We have a fantastic show for you guys lined up today. We have an amazing new unusual guest. Uh, before I go there, let me go around and introduce everybody. We have Shane Devine, because he is. We have Rob Gargiulo in the house. We have Brady Matthews with the freaking de denim, denim jean jacket looking like... He just came out of a Michael Jackson video uh, and our newest <laughs> unusual suspect. Uh, she's the co-host of the Steve Bannon's War Room. Uh, she's the founder of Shop. She's so right. She's a patriot. She's a conservative. She's beautiful inside and out. Ladies and gentlemen at home, Natalie Winters. Natalie, how you doing, love? So well. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, thank you for blessing us. I, I was I was telling uh, Robert, uh, I was just doing the deep dive into Natalie uh, on, on YouTube and on the internet and Instagram. When she talks, like, you're not, have you, you've seen, this girl just looks, no teleprompter, no nothing, and it's just, brr, facts, China, <laughs> this, Russia, Biden, and it's, uh, I'm, uh, I'm really happy that you're here. Well, there are very few journalists, at least in the mainstream orbit, who aren't bought off by the Chinese Communist Party. Yeah. That's a lot of what my early reporting had to focus on. So there are very few people who I think are unencumbered, whether it's by actual financial conflicts of interest, personnel conflicts of interests, a la Hunter Biden and the Biden crime family, who are able to report on China just subjectively and fairly. So I, I try to do my best. And that, Natalie, <laughs> where, are you, where are you from originally? And what was what was the... What was the moment where you're like, this is exactly what I want to do, and this is what I want to do for the rest of my life? Well, believe it or not, I am from Los Angeles. Oh, my God. Oh you boy. laughed, but you got out. I know. Yes. <laughs> Guys, we, did all, it. we all did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Me and you. Yeah. But Refugee. there's something about California conservatives. I think we see kind of the writing on the wall. We've had to face the horrible policies, right, that the left kind of perpetrate mm -hmm. on this country. It was definitely immigration that sort of radicalized me, as I'm sure the Biden regime would say. Yeah. Um, but but on the, the China front, I think what I really realized, I really took a liking to kind of the Bannon-esque worldview, which, which is that the middle class of this country has been intentionally hollowed out by the ruling class here in the United States. It's, a, it's the managed decline of this country. And the way that we've been able to see that happen is really by, I think, a merger between the Chinese Communist Party and elites here in this country where they've outsourced jobs, factories. And frankly, I think we saw with COVID our sovereignty um, to not just bureaucrats sort of at the super national level, I'm of course talking about the World Economic Forum, the World Health Organization, the United Nations, um, but I think in a lot of ways our ruling class here is very compromised by the Chinese Communist Party, and I would say look no further than 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue with what the Biden crime family has been doing for decades, frankly, with China. And, and literally getting away with, they could do what, like China can do no wrong, you still, mm -hmm. to this day, cannot, We I love how every week there's a new story, we almost think that this virus came from what it's like they own us we owe we owe them all this debt but anyway now we're gonna trust me we're gonna definitely get into <laughs> china uh but thank you again for thank being you. here I'm, I'm really really excited so guys uh, today's stories uh natalie's gonna obviously cover china buying up all the farmland and we're definitely gonna bash them because why not um i'm gonna talk about ashley biting's diary i i touched on it on the pbd podcast but you know i want to kind of take my time and go more uh in depth here today shane's gonna talk about this tech billionaire weirdo that wants to live Forever. He looks like mashed potatoes with nipples. I, mm. Rob said he kind of stole that from him. <laughs> um, Brady's going to talk about, uh, what's her name? Caitlin Clark? Clark? What's her name? Basketball. It's, it's kind of hard. Right. Caitlin Clark, yeah, for sure. Brady, I'm, I'm going to be honest with yeah. you. I'm not a huge basketball sport. <laughs> I know, I know. And guess what? Of all things, the female basketball because <laughs> I, I don't have the time. All right. I don't have the all time. Right. Hey, listen. But I'm it. interested because guess what? Her, she's a freaking female stud. She's, she's a amazing. phenomenon. She's amazing. Okay. Yep. And then Rob is going to talk about uh, America really being divided which i mean i think so but before we get into that and i think i'm going to get natalie involved with this uh the Manect app if you guys haven't downloaded it i think we just found out in q1 uh last year was like a thousand Manects. we're at almost eight thousand. kelly did you hear that eight thousand people are connecting it's a way to get in contact with professionals rob gargiulo's on there kelly's on there shane's on there I'm on there. Brady Matthews is wow, on there. Shame. Wow, look at that. After this, we're going to get Natalie on there. Kelly's on there. Wow, it's, it's look at app. Kelly. Woo. Natalie's 100% going to get signed up. Guys, any questions about life, um, spirituality, religion, relationships, jobs, YouTube, producing, comedy, sports, anything you guys want to talk about, you could text these people, you could request videos, and you could have a one-on-one. -on -one. It's not like Instagram because, Natalie, I'm pretty sure. Like, if I open up my Instagram, I have literally right now 500 unread. I can't. But when somebody's paying and they're paying for your time, 
you're 100% get invested and I'll do the homework uh, to give them what they need. But uh, that being said, guys, um, I'm happy you guys are here and we're going to get into our first uh, story. Natalie, uh, China is buying farmland. I did hear, I've been hearing, and not only as because as a veteran, they're buying them all over and next to military bases. I want to know what what your research has found. Sure. Well, it's all intentional and it's all by design. And I have to say, it's fun being able to present on this because in most academic settings where I feel like I'd be giving a presentation like this, yeah. you know you wouldn't be allowed to because of all the hundreds of millions of dollars <laughs> that universities have taken from the Chinese Communist Party, which again, is all by design because you're never going to see academia coming out and raising red flags about this issue. But I think this goes back to one of, I think, the central theses of the war room and of certainly my worldview, uh, which is that China China is at war with us, and currently it's a cold war. It's not necessarily kinetic boots on the ground, though. If you look at what's going on at the southern border, you look at what's going on in the South China Sea, if you even talk about the food processing plants exploding at this sort of weird record yeah. high numbers, you could maybe make the case that it's sort of already gone um, kinetic. But putting that aside, it really goes to what's called unrestricted warfare, which is the Chinese Communist Party's decades-long plot to destroy America from within, right? It's the idea of infiltration as opposed to invasion. They've seen from the United States and the decades-long forever wars that we've been engaged in in the Middle East, that it's not advantageous financially to get involved in other countries. So the way that they do it is in part uh, through sort of foreign influence operations. And my background was in tracking these. And I saw they used to go after politicians. They used to go after people in the mainstream media. Oftentimes, they would pay to take them on trips to China um, in exchange, for example, favorable coverage. That was a direct quote in these Foreign Agent Registration Act filings. Um, but I saw them pivot, especially when the Biden regime came into office and these these foreign influence groups, which are part of a really a multi-billion dollar political warfare operation um, called the United Front Work Department. They pivoted and they started going after agriculture ofi officials here in the United States, um, all the way down to local levels, including mayors uh, in really the heartland in the Midwest. And what I noticed is that this dovetailed with what what is it since 2010, a 5300 percent increase uh, in Chinese. Communist Party ownership of farmland here in the United States. And while we've seen some efforts from Republican officials, although I would I would say most of it is pretty performative to sort of counter the sale of land, uh, we haven't really seen any meaningful action. And I'd say it's especially concerning when you see, as you were alluding to, a lot of these land or the land that's being purchased is either very proximal to military bases or I think more broadly, uh, I think it kind of goes to the COVID mindset, which is the idea that you see these different spheres of life, whether it's public health, uh, you know, they've been really trying to weaponize climate change as of late, or they say issues like racism, these can now all sort of be weaponized. Yeah. And I think we see the food supply being weaponized now to create division, conflict, and potentially chaos in the near future. Natalie, how, how okay, how as the United States government, or the, everybody involved. How do you, how are you letting these people get away with literal murder from COVID to the agriculture? Is it is it? I don't think it's ignorance because when I hear ignorance is it's, no, it's, ignorance is ignorance. Or do they have dirt on these people? Are they compromised? Is is I know if I had to guess, Hunter's compromised, Joe Biden's compromised. But China's been doing this forever. But it's been ramped up in this past four years. How how are they getting away with it and nobody's checking them? We would be lucky if it were ignorance, because at least you could still kind of go with the old neocon mindset that the engagement school with China, that these people are just optimistic that if we allow China, you know, to join the World Trade Organization, that we'll change them. They're not going to change us. Um, but unfortunately, the issue is sort of goes back to what I was talking about, that the Chinese Communist Party has waged systematic and systemic campaigns. Really, they've targeted what I call the Achilles heel here in the United States of the, really the power brokers in media, academia, politics all the way to the White House. Make no mistake that it's Joe Biden, right, who's sitting there, if he even knows it, uh, <laughs> in the White House right now. And the way that they do it, like I said, it comes a lot of it from what's called this United Front Work Department, which is a multi-billion dollar, with the B, um, political warfare operation that emanates out of Beijing, where they specifically target, for example, like I was talking about people in the mainstream media, for over 10 years, they had these programs under this group, again, very innocuous, very nice sounding, called the China United States Exchange foundation hmm. i always say buried lead they put china first yeah of course um, smart but they were paying to take journalists from cnn the washington post new york times the harvard business review even local papers and they were paying to take them all expenses paid trips to china and upon return again this was all evidenced in foreign agent registration act filings but 
you know, they're obviously not going to expose of themselves. Course. They're not going to report course. on it. But it showed that upon return, they had to, quote, disseminate positive messages and provide, quote, favorable coverage. So China has really created this, this ecosystem in Washington, D.C., where they've bought off the media, so they're not going to report on it. And Hunter Biden, they've bought off the politicians. They've bought off sort of the American princelings, right? Their children are all in, somehow in business um, with the Chinese Communist Party. So it really is a, a you know, devilishly evil form of brilliance that the Chinese Communist Party has waged its political warfare at its finest, but it's the concept of strangling us with our own systems. In other words, because we are a free and open society, because we allow our businesses to go overseas and engage with China, you don't see that same reciprocity in China. Yep. Um, that's how they corrupt these individuals. And unfortunately, when we have a ruling class that I think to their core hate America, um, they're not going to stand up for it because they don't see that there's anything unique about America that's worth defending. Well, um, a perfect example of this is how Gavin Newsom rolled out the red carpet when uh, she came to San Francisco. They put up giant fencing. Yeah, they evacuated yeah. all yeah. the homeless, cleared out downtown San Francisco. Not one flag, Rob. Not no, one of our flags. No, was not seen. at all. And people were standing on the streets waving the Chinese flags. And you're like, well, wait a minute. Whatever happened to America first? And totally. That, and and it was, when it, you look at that. Obviously, there are solutions to the problems that America is facing. If they can clean the streets up for when foreign dignitaries come to the United States, why can't they keep the streets cleaned up the rest, the other 364 days out of the totally. year? Why is it only when the president of China comes to do we clean up our shit? That's is that that's it right there, Kelly. Guys, look at look at <clears throat> Kelly. Put you show that. Look at this. Watch this. Look at bro. That's that, terrifying because, where, you know, yeah. Oh, American, I saw one American flag. Boy, it. Is it doubled with the Chinese it's, flag? They're terrifying. holding both. It's, it's holding smaller. both. They even, put, look, they even put fencing up, too, just Yo, in no, case oh, you want to get you over and get, do something. You can't get near that guy. Are That's you, insane. And then you look at some of the athletes in the United States who kowtow to the Chinese. Look at uh, uh, John Cena when he upset yeah. uh, China by saying that Taiwan was it was yep. it an independent country is what he said. Yeah. And then he issued an apology in Mandarin. Yeah. Not yeah. even in English. He apologized you in speak, Mandarin. Yeah, you yeah, speak yeah. Mandarin, bro? Yeah. And then there was an article that came out from the New York Times this week. Uh, it's titled, China will use AI to disrupt elections in the United States, South Korea, and India. This according to Microsoft. So Yeah, because well, using what, God, unfortunately, it, Microsoft is the one that's warning you about it. So it's an evil corporation to do, warning you. To do what, well, Rob? To interfere with elections? Interfere in the elections using artificial artificial intelligence in the United States, I, South Korea, and India. So not only have they corrupted our politicians, but now they're trying to corrupt and influence the elections among the American people. Yeah, but, what's scary, too, is um, they can't have Trump back in there. They can't have him in that's there. That's a great they point. To, they can't have him in there because all of the scheming that they've been doing, right, China, all the scheming that they've been doing goes through Biden. It oh, goes through Biden. Right. Well, if, they it, can't have Trump back in there. So no matter what, they have to rip this. That's, and that should scare the shit out of everybody because yeah. I wanted to ask you, Nat, uh, I, this is my opinion. If this was a movie, 2020, the president of whatever country is like, we're going to keep China accountable, to hell with them, keep them trading and blah, blah. Then all of a sudden, a virus, guys, comes out of a lab from there. They don't get held accountable. So do you think, Natalie, that this that's a feasible assumption that this lab leak leak came out of this place to get this president out and then going to Brady's point this 2024 election say, with Rob saying with all this by the way we're having like little test runs of all these yeah. outages and these yeah, hacks what yeah, do you yeah. think what do you think Nat? well fun fact on Microsoft they actually created Windows China Government Edition so Sweet. the Chinese Communist Shut Party Sweet. actually runs and administers the country <laughs> using Microsoft technology so I think it is very funny and you are very correct that a lot of this cyber security outage narratives that we're hearing which of course dovetails quite nicely with what the World Economic Forum Forms. is warning us about yeah. in Davos, um, that a lot of these companies that are in bed with the Chinese Communist Party, I think it's sort of some weird dry runs going on. Yeah. Um, and I think you could also make the case that a lot of this you know, pandemic prevention talk that you were hearing about prior to COVID, I always say pandemic prevention is the largest racket that we've seen in this country because the same people who were supposed to be preventing COVID-19 profited, whether financially or in terms of power, from it actually <laughs> happening. And when you look at how they covered up what happened to um, at the Wuhan Institute of Virology and yeah. how we see reporting that it wasn't just NIAID and NIH and Anthony Fauci, but that it was over a dozen federal agencies that were attuned, that there was gain-of-function research going on at the Wuhan Institute of Virology and not a single person said anything. That is when you realize that there was a massive cover-up that went on. But I think, frankly, the more sinister take on all of the COVID stuff is not just that the Chinese Communist Party was acting alone, but that it sort of
sort of is that really tale as old as time that I was alluding to in the beginning, which is that there's a sort of elite merger between the United States and the Chinese Communist Party, and that we are funding our own demise by funneling millions <laughs> right. of dollars to China. So but also, lives. doesn't Bill Gates, I'm sorry to cut you off, I apologize, but doesn't Bill Gates have a huge play in this as well, working with the Chinese Communist Party, buying farmland? Do you know what I'm saying? Because I saw a whole thing about how Bill Gates owns predominantly most of the farmland in the U.S., you're very correct. And I would say the Chinese Communist Party in conjunction with sort of the American ruling class epitomized by people like Bill Gates right. are buying up massive swaths. But what's very, very interesting is that there are some groups that are part of this united front called the, believe it, they have all these very funny sounding names. It's like the Chinese People's Association for Friendship and Foreign <laughs> right, Contact. Right. Okay. And Bill Sounds Gates, nice. right? Bill Gates has headlined a ton of their events. He's partnered with them. He's given them money. So there are these bridges that exist. Um, between these kind of Chinese influence groups that are targeting the farmland. And I always say, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. Yeah. If Bill Gates and the Chinese Communist yeah. Party are collaborating on something... Those, you're screwed. Uh, Is there more than a fire? Side. It's more than yeah. a fire, Nat. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, so besides Bill Gates, who would you say are the chief culprits in the whole merger of the U.S. elite with China? I mean, like Chamber of Commerce, I know, comes up a lot. Who are like the top lobbyists and who are the top that we like, see Shane, yeah, that, 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 are in our that you know of that are just need to be known about how much of a role they play in this sure the chamber of commerce have certainly played a big role there's an amcham china branch and they are always lobbying whether it's congress or just making sure that their companies can do business in china and i think that that's one of the quickest pipelines that you see these companies their executives get corrupted but honestly my take on you know who it, who we need to focus on who we need to shine the spotlight on it's the names that people don't know. They're not the household names. It's the people who are sort of the shady, swampy lobbyists who are only listed on the FARA filings working. You know, the, and these are people who I think the worst part of it is that used to be federal employees, right? Used to have taxpayer subsidized salaries who are now leveraging those connections to work as lobbyists, to work as consultants for not just the Chinese Communist Party, but in some cases, Chinese Communist Party owned, you know, military entities, t firms and companies that are directly tied to the People's Liberation Army. So it's those people People who have really helped them go after and target, like I always say, the Achilles heel of this country. Um, one of the groups, I believe it was Wilson Global Communications, um, set up, believe it or not, an exchange between the Chinese Communist Party, a similar kind of pay for play trip with um, the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, mm -hmm. who, of course, accuses everyone of being racist. Yeah. But meanwhile, they were sending high school and college age students, African Americans. Um, and upon return, these students were compelled to write testimonials about their trips and experiences oh, yeah. in China. Yeah. And I kid you not, one of the quotes, the girl literally said, China is an amazing communist country that I hope will surpass the United States one day. Oh. That's a direct quote. That's so terrifying. they're brainwashing young Americans in exchange for Chinese Communist Party. Wow. Rob, what are you going to say? When it uh, comes to Bill Gates, um, because you had mentioned that he is uh, owning massive amounts of farmland in the United States, he actually is the largest yep. private landowner in the United States with more than 269,000 acres of farmland across many states in the United States, specifically Nebraska. He keeps buying up farmland in uh, Nebraska. However, this information that I just told you is two years old. So imagine how much more farmland he yeah. has purchased in the past anymore. two years. Yep. Um, and then something very interesting about about 2020. Let's try and not use tr trigger words. About 2020. Yes. Nothing. There were no consequences for the Chinese government for being at least complicit or unleashing I uh, is the okay, word I whatever use. Whatever you want to say. There's yeah. been no consequences at all. Not a fine. Nobody's been imprisoned. Meanwhile, in the United States of America, citizens in our country faced more repercussions than China itself, who may or may not have created the virus, by standing up for their rights and saying, "No, I didn't want to take this, uh, wow. you know, this jab or that jab." I was; those people were put in positions where they had to choose between taking their job or taking a shot. And if they chose not to take the shot, they were fired from their job. So our own government allowed our citizens to be persecuted for a virus that China released, and yet we don't hold the country that released that Brilliant. virus that, accountable. Yeah, at all. Sense. That makes yeah, like absolutely like I, I say unbelievable. And that's gonna get to my to my question. I want to ask you now, and then I'll. I'll, I'll go around and ask you guys too. How are we going to stop them? How it, it, and mind you, Natalie, I'm always optimistic because I don't care what anybody says. Trump was the answer, and I hope to God they don't try to do something stupid or China unleashes something where we can't have have this election. How do we stop them? Is Trump 
the initial shot back into their face because at least now he knows who the enemy is. And, and I want to know your opinion on that. Of course. And Trump actually sanctioned a lot of these kind of shady front groups that were operating at the, the behest of Beijing. And I think, honestly, the way that you you counter this is by talking about it and i know that's always a cliche answer but for so long um these chinese communist party influence groups have been able to get away with it because no one has been reporting on them because the only media ecosystem that existed was bought and paid for by the chinese communist party but when you have shows like this shows like the war room just general independent media rising up as we're seeing right now um I think that's how you push back. And a lot of these groups that I've talked about have taken down their websites. A lot of them have sort of ceased to exist, which I find really great. Um, of course, they always rebrand. But I think the the best kind of tell and how you know we're over the target was that it was about a month ago um, that the Biden regime came out with a report from, uh, I believe it was maybe the government accountability office or something in that realm. Um, and they said, well, everyone who's, you know, crying wolf about China owning farmland, you guys are all conspiracy theorists because we don't actually have the numbers. We don't know who owns farmland yeah. in yeah. the United States. They never States, have the numbers, do they? Right? And it's like, yeah. well, that doesn't necessarily prove job. that we're wrong. It just yeah. proves that you don't know, which is almost more concerning. So I definitely think we just need to, to keep pushing, but just be aware of, uh, and like even when, you know, we're already raising the red flags about this whole weird cybersecurity stuff that they're spinning. Um, so I think knowledge really is power. And just by even listening to this show, yeah, me. they or wish the they wish you couldn't. Or the war room, because that's <laughs> how I found that's how I found you. But uh, so, what's this clip that you have here? Uh, can you set it up for us, Natalie, before we see it? Sure, sure, sure. So this guy is Nick Burns. Now he's our ambassador to China. He used to be a consultant for big DC swampy think tank. That he's a, he's a swamp creature in bed with China. He oh. said China oh. is not an enemy; they're a collaborator. We need them. We can't get rid of them. Oh, he's an alligator. And he's a swamp creature. You'll see. Now, there's two important notes for this video. Yeah. One is that he's actually speaking, catch this, at the anniversary of the China-United States Exchange Aww, Foundation, a known so, communist so amazing, front friends. group that is trying to actively take down the United States oh, because, of course. What a sweetie pie. And secondly, he alludes to a couple working groups having been established between the United States and China under the Biden regime. And two of them were reported publicly having to do with commerce and trade. But the third one that he mentions has to do with agriculture and farmland and why this is so interesting the biden regime never announced it publicly and i think oh. this was sort of a slip on his part mm -hmm. because they know that it would be so woefully unpopular with the american people right now yeah. because they're actively collaborating with a country that is you know they have a history of seizing the means of production i don't yeah, think we should you let think them be purchasing so? our farmland so you if you want to so? roll the the video we can okay yeah can we show the video Federal working groups to communicate on economic issues and work out our differences, including Treasury's economic and financial working groups, the Department of Commerce's commercial issues working group and information exchange on export controls, and the agricultural working groups between our two governments. The purpose of these groups is to provide ongoing channels for our teams to drill into the substance of economic, trade, and financial policy issues. We're focusing on specific high priority economic topics on which we can make tangible progress. These are important developments to position our two governments to support a continuation of robust trade. We are robust, robust trade, my trade. ass. <laughs> yeah. I don't trust any of these yo, any of these people and the fact that Natalie, our border, I, I Rob, what was the number? We've we've arrested, arrested, forget about the getaways. It went from just four years ago, we had three hundred Chinese nationals arrested to 400 to 300. And then in last year, 23,000 Chinese nationals arrested. This year, Q1, 24,000 Chinese nationals. And you nailed it. This is a war. But anytime you hear war, what do you think of? Tanks, bombs, babies, oh, people crying. No, no. This is a strategic yes, TikTok. TikTok, get the brain of the kids. Uh, go buy all the farmland. Go uh, cyber attack them. And they're setting up all their pieces for like an end game type of situation. I'm telling you, they own our asses. And I think, and you nailed it, uh, Natalie, that the, the Biden family, the with Hunter, and the, they can do whatever they want. 
want. Mm. And it's so what are you gonna say, Rob? You gonna say well, look at the Chinese spy balloon that flew across the entire United oh, States yeah. and when did we act after it completed its mission and it was over the ocean and then it was safe for us to shoot down. But we let we confirmed that it was Chinese owned, it was surveillance technology, and we let it fly all the way across from Alaska through Canada, all the way through uh the United States before shooting it down once it got over water on the eastern seaboard. Yeah. So it went across the entire United States and it got all of the information that it needed and the Biden administration does just enough to make it look like we're not in bed with the Chinese yeah. by acting, but they act after the mission has been complete. One hundred percent. And I yeah. think, but and then throughout the year, I think there was like two or three of them that just kept happening, as if <laughs> there was one that they shot down over the over uh, Lake Michigan, yeah. and they still won't. They have they have video footage of it, yeah. but they have not released the video footage. Have you heard about that one? The mysterious no. UFO object that was over Lake Michigan. They shot down, and nobody has reported on that at all since it happened. That was seven, eight months ago. Yeah, and. My the the main one that was hovering over Malmstrom Air Force Base, Montana, shout out to Mount, I was stationed there, is a nuclear missile base. Just oh, throwing perfect. that out there. We had, when I was there, 200 intercontinental ballistic missile. They let you in charge? I was in charge. I was a flight security <laughs> control. Yeah. But, dude, think about it. This thing was hovering over that base. What? Yeah. What? It's, guys, it's, it's a war, but like I said, it's not a thing. And... The powers that be have sold their souls for riches. This is like biblical stuff because they think once the takeover happens, they're going to be taken care of. But totally. guys, this is China. China. Yeah. You know the history of China? You know who's the most murderous? The most murderous regime out of all of them? It wasn't Hitler. It wasn't Stalin. Um, who was Mao killed in four or five years? 45 million of his own people. This is this communism keeps going and it's coming here and it's scary as shit. And, and again, but don't I forget about their uh, concentration camps they have right now too. Oh, what yeah. do you mean for of the Uyghurs? Course, of no, no, one's no one's talking about oh, no. that. They no. also have no in their books, that? like Xi Jinping writes, how you know by 2050 we want to achieve this goal, and the whole idea is like they have been biding their time. Like Mao wanted to take on the United States, and in one essay he says it's fine if we go to nuclear war. If the Earth gets destroyed in nuclear bombs, it would be better. Than if we sit and allow the capitalists to can continue you, can you, to oppress us. Can you imagine that? And and like reading Mao is just insane because, like, it's he's almost funny in this really like weird devilishly charming way. Yeah. In that he doesn't give a shit about human life at all. Yeah. Like it doesn't face him at all. And he's like, you know, none of this really matters. And like we're just some animals on a planet. And like who really cares if like a hundred million Chinese die? It would be good if it's towards the goal of global communist revolution. So it's like that philosophy is what we're dealing with. And then like their their chairman, their presidents outline what they want to do by 5, 10, 25, 50 year goals where they say we want to take over this much amount of the earth, we want to be this much more productive. Our presidents get in for 4 years and throw shit at the wall and complain about each other, and yeah. then they're out again. Yeah. We don't have any far-reaching goals as a country. We don't have any visionary leaders. We don't even have like a uniting philosophy for a country to live by. And China is, you know, they might not have personal freedoms. They might not have like anything good about the quality of life, but they have this like overarching ambition to like conquer the world. Oh. And like we, it's not even about. If we can replace Biden with some guy who currently wants to restrict them, we need to replace them with someone who is as far looking as them and far reaching as them. Otherwise, it's like the world is for those who want to take it. And they right now they want to take, take it. it. And guess so. what? You got you to give them credit where credit is due because they're freaking they're playing the long game. They're trying to win and destroy us. Go You're ahead, Rob. talking visionary instead of reactionary. And I yeah, feel like that's where that's we're at. We've been for 20 years, 30 years as a country. It's just vi reactionary, reactionary. Who the was last, the last visionary that we had in office? I mean, Trump was kind of visionary, but it's make America great again. Like it's backwards. The neocons were kind of visionary, like, but it's spread democracy around the world which isn't really a strategy because it's just we, the military class, will become rich while everyone else in the country becomes poor. Like, they don't care. They didn't care about the citizens, and it wasn't a real vision. I mean, like, and, and I mean, really, like, I wouldn't even say Reagan. I would say, like, oh. JFK is the last, like, vision. Yeah, and, and look what happened to somebody that has a vision. Yeah. <laughs> they shoot you in the head. Well, they did it to a bunch of people that year. Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther yeah. King. Oh, yeah, they're Dr. like, Max, hey, guys, vision, JFK, peace, Lennon. and love. 
Nope, mm -hmm. we're not having that shit. But uh, all right, guys. Oh, and also, Patrick, actually, it's funny, Natalie. Patrick just put a video on Valuetainment called Farmer's Last Stand. And Kelly, that's about uh, that. China and everything. That looks good. That looks amazing. That's a good thumbnail. Global protests around the world about farmers. I, I haven't seen it, but that, dude, the thumbnail, Whew. everything looks, all these guys did a freaking fantastic job. But uh, all right, guys, we're going to be, Natalie, I love you. You made me hate China even more. And by the way, hey. you, I can, <laughs> by, and I want everybody to know this. You can hate China just like people hate America. Doesn't make you racist. The regime, and I love that you call it the Biden regime because it is a regime. Yes. You can hate China and what they stand for. Doesn't mean I hate the people. I have Chinese friends. Like, what, I love Chinese food. They're I the most Chi repressed by the Chinese they regime. Don't, yeah. yeah, exactly. So trust me, they're on my side. <laughs> All right, guys, moving on. Um, Ashley Biden's diary. But this is this is the actual, there's a Hill story that came out yesterday. We talked about, but Rob, it actually went down. The Florida woman who stole, um, by the way, I'm reading this as, as a left-wing media outlet would report it, <laughs> stole Ashley Biden's diary in 2020. She was sentenced yesterday to one month in prison. Uh, prosecutors accused Amy Harris of stealing the president's daughter's diary in September 2020 while she was temporarily staying at Ashley Biden's residence in Delray Beach, Florida. It wasn't her house. But anyway, moving on. The diary contained highly personal entries as well as tax records, a cell phone, family photos, according to the DOJ. Harris enlisted her friend Robert Curlander to assist her efforts, and they pleaded guilty to conspiracy charges in 2022. Project Veritas, based in New York, paid Harris and Curlander $20,000 each for the diary and other materials, which they then returned to Florida to obtain. And now, the truth, all right? The diary was left behind by Ashley Biden. Nobody stole anything. Amy Harris, who was subsequently lived at the house, discovered it under a bed, along with Ashley's stuff, her luggage, her pills, uh, and all that type of stuff. Here is a clip of a woman calling Project Veritas. They actually clipped it because they're smart. Uh, she left a message on uh, her finding the diary and what happened. Kelly, play this clip. Their friend who owns a house down here in Palm Beach was renting it out. I don't know how, it, but this is a while back. But anyway, somebody, a new renter moved in and Ashley Biden was staying in this room and they found her diary, all of her clothes, luggage, pills. Anyway, um, diary is pretty crazy. crazy. Um, I think it's worth taking a look at. It's not a joke. It's real. And um, I'd love to get into your hands. Okay, so... Amy Harris uh, and Robert Curlander, they tried to sell it to the Trump campaign during a, a rally, mm -hmm. and I love this. You know what Trump's people and Trump said? No, we don't want it. We're not doing this shit. Take it to the FBI. That's how gangster Trump is. So then they take it to James O'Keefe. He purchased it, but guess what he does? Shout out to James. He's a good friend of mine. He got raided. No, he doesn't publish it because he goes, I can't authenticate it, but he took the photos. He, 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 you know, he did his own investigation. Uh, and then um, in November 2020, you nailed it, Brady. The DOJ raided his place and another location yeah. looking for a diary, which, Natalie, I don't know if you guys know this or not. That's, this is 2020. Joe Biden is nobody. He's just running for president. You can direct the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Department of Justice, to go get a yeah. diary. Mm -hmm. Guys, abuse of power, kiss my ass. How, how do you give orders for that? But anyway, this further proves my point, and I know I'm being long-winded, but I'm going to come to you guys, that the FBI is run by the left. OK, they protect Joe Biden. And this is 2020, mind you. Same time they raided O'Keefe's house. The FBI, remember, this all helping Joe Biden had 80 FBI agents. Remember, they had them at Twitter stopping all the stories, all, suppressing all the negative stories about him and his degenerate son, Hunter. Now, guys, regardless of all this, they stole, they convicted, whatever. The diary is real. All right. Here's a clip of Ashley Biden calling Project Veritas to get her stuff back uh, and to get the she goes, if you guys don't give it to me, I'm going to have Secret Service involved. Have you seen this, Natalie? Oh, mm -hmm. check, check this out. Go ahead. Hi, is this Ashley Biden? This is she. How are you? I'm doing well. Yeah, I just wanted to, so I heard you have um, a few of my belongings. <laughs> um, and so I was going to ask if, it would, if you could please meet my friend, Eric, who is down in Delray. If you could meet him and get, and get this up to him. There's there's a, a diary here. It starts in January. It says January at the end of a New York month. I'm sitting on a bed uh, at the I building. Yeah. So if you could just give everything that you have um, to Eric, that would be really um, uh, great. 
I don't want to give this to to the wrong person. I mean, I want to make sure. At this, is the, at this point, and I don't mean to, I, I don't want to have to get Secret Service involved in yep. this, right? Because it's just, it's a whole process. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I am Ashley Biden. It is my oh. stuff. So if you could just Boom. get all of that over, I would really. There's also a page in the journal where she goes, I am Ashley Blazer Biden. She, so yeah. Like, oh, I wonder who's journal yeah. this is. And, um, you know, I'll read this, and then I want to ask you, Nat. So this is um, this is a, a, a part of the, of the diary where she says, I was molested, okay, because I'm not going to get into the, all the particulars. I was molested. I was over-sexualized at an early age. And then she says, uh, a young age, showers with my dad, probably not appropriate. And, guys, I'm going to send Kelly the link. And Umberto, they're going to put it uh, in the description. You could read all 127 pages. I actually feel bad uh, for this girl. And I want to have a question. And then, Kelly, we'll come back to, to play this, my love. Uh, Natalie, I want to ask you a question. I'll ask you guys, too. Do you think the Biden kids, her, Hunter, I mean, Bo, God rest his soul, he has nothing to do with this. But they were obviously abused mentally and physically. Uh, are they doing this for a cry for help? Like almost like a Hansel and Gretel leaving, like it's it's like a Hunter and Ashley leaving breadcrumbs because they're trying to like scream for help. You know, I don't know, but I feel like I am probably well equipped to answer that question because a lot of the reporting I did actually had to do with the Hunter Biden hard drive. And as someone oh, who great. had it in my possession for a while, oh, never so got, got a, raided. Oh, but you got the dirt. <laughs> Not yet. Yes. Give yes. it to us. Wow. Um, do you have any screenshots? I do. It's it's now oh. back in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I, now you're going to get raided. Yeah, yeah. No, right? <laughs> um, no, I. So it, it is to answer your question. And, um, you know, most of the reporting I think people have seen from the Hunter Biden hard drive has sort of been the punchy headlines, the audio clips, the just depraved, deranged pictures. But on the you know emotional level, when I was going through it, and believe me, I will be scarred for life, the things oh, I had to see. No. Oh, <laughs> but, you know, you, I, we went through the entirety of, of his camera roll, right? And the beginning stages of it, it looked like a happy guy with a family. You know, everyone looked pretty normal. And it was over the course of, what, six or so years that I believe the hard drive had covered. And by the end of it, every other picture was a hooker, a prostitute, um, a some, you know, any, 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 <laughs> some form of a drug, like yeah. something really not okay and really sad to see. And I always say that's sort of the untold story of the hard drive is just this individual's descent into just pure chaos and hell when were the years do you know the years that th that that hard drive covered or like a guesstimation i think like mid 2010s to maybe like 2017 2018 ish okay I, i'm just wondering if there's any timing of his father leaving office and then just like you we always talk about how absolute power absolutely corrupts Corrupt, right? absolutely yeah well yeah so you look at him and this is a guy that had he had his father was the vice president of the United States. You have somebody that's going to protect you at all costs. Yeah. All of a sudden, when that political power is removed, your father is no longer the president. What is that or vice president? What does that feel like? Did that have anything to do with this dissent where it's all of a sudden my, I'm no longer protected? I start lashing out. I start doing drugs. I start hanging out with hookers. I start smoking crack. Or if it was just was it the brother dying? Like there's got to be something that because the guy's had a rough life. I'm not I, believe me. I'm not a Hunter Biden fan. I'm not justifying anything. Yeah. But he was involved in the auto crash in 72 that killed uh, Joe Biden's first wife, the daughter, Naomi, uh, uh, Bo and Hunter were in that vehicle and yeah. were severely injured. So imagine you're four, five, six years old. You survive a car crash that kills your mother, kills your sister. You're raised by a single father. Like that is a very traumatic thing for somebody yeah. to go through. Yeah. And then for these things to not manifest themselves into your late 30s, early 40s, like yeah. what's the trigger that causes all that stuff to start happening? Yeah, because I, I definitely think 100% that there was abuse mentally, physically, allegedly with what she's saying. And bro, and as a, as a girl, Natalie and Kelly, you guys could answer this. What is an inappropriate age? The fact that she remembers that her father was, and, and you have kids. I can tell you, because I like we would go to the beach and we would come back and to save time, my son and I would grab a shower together. It got to the point where he was like three, yeah. two or three, where we're like, all right. That's enough. Like, we don't need to three, save time. this is three, Robbie. Yeah, because usually my wife would hand me the kid in the shower. I'd hold him up, rinse him off, yeah. and then I'd hand him back. Yeah. You know, like, we're in there scrubbing each other's backs. <laughs> it was like a quick, here, rinse yeah. him off, take him yeah, out. Yeah. But it got to the point where I was like, all right, he's old enough to get in the shower himself. He can shower by himself. I don't need to be in here. My wife can handle that. Yeah, that's yeah. the same thing. I have a daughter, too. And I, I, get in, I was telling you, Vin, I get in there and I take Boston in there. I, now I put swim trunks on. 
If I because yeah, because sure. I'm a single dad, yeah. so I got no one else. So I'm gonna take her in there. I gotta I gotta wash her and everything. I gotta wash her in there with. She's gonna be three years old. Yeah. Sooner or later, she's gonna figure out what's dad at got the mom's does. Yeah. Have, you know what I mean? Like that's three. Yeah. That's how smart they are. Yeah. But can you imagine showering oh, your dad? Uh, at 12, 13 years no, old. No, that's ridiculous. That's Natalie, Natalie, what do you think? Um, I don't usually cuss, but it's weird as shit. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> It's yeah, yeah, Sorry. no, it, and but honestly, I think the the proof is in the the reaction to it. In other words, it's not just the FBI; it was the entirety of the deep state that was weaponized. And frankly, it was the same playbook that they did with Hunter Biden's hard drive. Right? They try to pretend, they try to say, "Oh, it's not true." It's oh, it's disinformation, probably Russian. Uh, they you know wheel out a couple dozen you know spies from the CIA. In this case, it was the FBI. They try to discredit, discredit. Yeah. They use the the apparatus of the state to try to intimidate, which as you pointed out too it was president trump's doj so how they were weaponizing that against project veritas i mean who knows yeah i mean the deep state is deep you know what i mean like very deep and i love when people and there's a misconception and you know this rob more than anybody we had this talk trump came in into the swamp okay and people well he appointed christopher rain what other choice does he have he doesn't know anybody in that world except in the donor you know i would say clinton like he always said that he knew everybody but when you come into office and i don't think personally i don't think trump thought he was gonna win he was done with the apprentice and he's like yeah i'm gonna go for it him and roger stone we love freaking roger yeah go for it run and then i heard from reports that trump was like holy shit like we won oh my god it was a shocking victory and then you're in you're surrounded by these people. Whoever, Monk, Mike Pompeo, who's a freaking swamp. Nancy Pelosi? Anaconda. Well, yeah, what I'm saying is in oh. his, all the Republicans that were surrounding him, they're all, and that was my question to you, um, Natalie, especially with this type of stuff. I don't believe in parties. I don't believe in Democrat. I don't believe in Republican. I think it's the uniparty. It's as if it's the WWE. Like, I think, uh, how can I put this? I think the Republicans are Hulk Hogan. The Democrats are... Uh, Onto the giant. Okay. When you see them, yeah, backstage, they love each other. They're on the same team. Whenever I hear, oh, my friends across the aisle, bullshit. You're all on the same team. It's them against us. They don't give a shit about us. And with this type of situation, if this is true, which it seems like it is, Natalie, this girl has severe mental issues in rehab, her relationships with these guys. She's like, I'm over-sexualized. She said, and I don't want to get into detail, in the... Uh, diary she's like i was listening to my mom and dad have sex and i was hitting my female parts and like she's like she's so confused i'm gonna put it in there you guys can read it for yourself and this is the point i want to make uh as well uh ashley and this is in the thing she was contemplating whether this is in the uh diary uh her father was sexually inappropriate with her when she was little and she mentions um uh, she refers to being uh, with this was in it. I'm sorry. She wrote that Joe Biden was brought to tears over worry for his daughter just before the Democratic primary debate because of the diary. He was crying to her like, oh, shit, I'm going to be exposed. You're going to be exposed. Um, and then she, uh, because if you guys think about it, if that diary in that time, Natalie, got into the wrong hands, China, for one. They have black men. Bro, they got you. They could be like, hey, listen, mm -hmm. besides your dumbass son Hunter's <laughs> laptop, that freaking degenerate freak, your daughter said that you were showering with her. And it, this is this is corroborated. This is her diary. You know what that does to you as a black male? So then that leads to, you better do this. You better let us fly balloons. You better let, guess what? We're going to put a little virus. You're going to shut the hell up and let it deal with it. People are going to die. That I think that's it. Because, guys, and let's be honest with each other, and I'm going to close with this. Can we not pretend that Joe Biden hasn't given us a history, a plethora, and it doesn't stop? He had to make a video apologizing in 2017, I believe, where he's like, I'm touchy, and I guess the rules have changed, and I have to stop. This is a quick montage. This is when Joe Biden, by the way, this is in one yeah. one viewing. Yeah. I think it's when he was swearing in, getting sworn in for vice president. People at home, please, Natalie, all you guys in here, Rob, Brady, Shane, Kelly, you guys tell me if you're parents and you're standing there, Robert, I want to know your opinion, and you're letting your daughters and your son getting touched like this, tell me if this is right. Kelly, play the clip. When you're standing right next to me. And then By the way, that's the real let, 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 let it go. Got it. Okay. And the people in the back, just spread out a little bit. Dude, like, 
By the way, she, by the way Brady, she commented about this. This girl, look at this girl. Look at it. Uh, look, look, look at this. Look at the dad. That's the real Joe Biden. Look, look, at, look at him. Yeah, he's ha hand on her breast. Smile. No, no, look, this one. Watch. I'll show you the one. Hey, Angel, how old are you? Hey, look, watch. You're 12. You? Rubbing her head. Huh? How are you? Problem is, you know, look, you guys, look. you got a heart. <laughs> yeah. you know I mean? All right. And I hate watching. Drives me crazy. I like kids. Old man. He's, no, 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 no. And watch this. This is the eight-year-old girl. She moves at eight years old. She's uncomfortable. He's pinching her nipple. What the fuck is going on? Sorry, guys. This is ridiculous. When is this okay? Do you know what my my dad used to say. Yeah, my dad used to say, stop touching little kids, asshole. Yeah, Kelly, pause it. So this, guys, and then, and then when people like us talk about elites, pedophilia, islands, Epstein, every single day, the, another, uh, uh, one of the guys in charge of the queer something at Princeton just got in trouble for pedophilia. The, he got, <laughs> some guy at Princeton. No, it's just just the way you describe yeah. it. He was in charge, charge of the queer, the queer, the queer yeah. alumni. Yeah, I know. He was in charge it's of the queer classic, alumni. The and by the way, and I say this all the time, you know the show To Catch a Predator? That show could have had an episode every hour on the hour for the rest of humanity. There's no shortage of these demon pedophiles. The only reason to stop, because one of the pedophiles, you know what happened, right? They got caught, ran in the house, and shot himself in the head. Good. That's the only reason that show Good. quit. So that type of behavior, that type of just disgust goes, it, 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 it further corroborates my, our suspicions, our feels. These people are disgusting. They've sold their souls to people like China. They, they, they are perverted towards children, and they are untouchable. So there's two things. Saviors, like Jesus Christ, has to come back to fix the whole system, or we need leaders, I think, Natalie, like a Donald Trump, because Donald Trump is anti all this BS, anti uh, the children. He's a Christian. He believes in God, and I think that's the old, that it has to start with leaderships like that, like a leader like that that's not compromised. I will draw the through line. It was only about, I believe, about a year ago that we broke the story that it was actually the Biden regime that erased from the DOJ's website the page that was dedicated to the international sex trafficking of minors and the domestic sex trafficking of minors. They literally deleted the web page to which we said, why would you do that? Yeah. Why? And there's no rationale. It wasn't like they were reformulating the web. They just literally erased it. They deleted paragraphs after paragraphs about how open borders contribute, not just to the sex trafficking of children, um, but how to spot it, how to report it, what to do if you see it. And you delete it and they delete, you delete it? it. Oh, I wonder why. Who yeah. said that Diddy, the reason why he's falling now is because um, they're done with him? Like, because someone was like, the only reason why the feds would go after him now is because, like, he's no longer a viable asset. He's not a I, yeah. I agree. I said that. I, I, I forgot. How, I, very good point. Yeah. I, I don't know who it was, but they milk you. They use you. They blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. And then they're like, okay, wait a minute. Cassie came forward. Oh, shit. Now they blew the roof off this thing. Guess what? Yeah. You're done. Because the, the DHS uh, wing that did the raid on Diddy's houses is yeah. like a human trafficking. Yeah. Wing, but it only started like a couple years ago. So you just saying that just made me think like maybe they closed that and started this other wing that like makes it look like they're fighting human trafficking, but they're really just like cleaning up they're, like their assets. I, I think it's a cleanup. Yeah. I think it's a cleanup mess. All right, guys, uh, moving on. Uh, Shane, this tech billionaire that wants to live forever, the freak. Yes. Can you please talk? T tell us about this guy. Yeah, so Tucker just had on Brian Johnson, who is a technically millionaire but he has a lot of money okay um who uh he started a payment processor called braintree sold that for 800 million uh and has after that decided to dedicate his life to uh figuring out how to live forever so um what <laughs> he has 30 doctors working around the clock every day monitoring his vitals and recommending a diet 30 30 doctors 30. and uh he he uh, takes over 100 supplements per day. He has a strict vegan diet with zero processed foods. Uh, he ha he injected himself and his father with his son's blood. He calls it plasma, but it's blood. Oh. Uh, it it causes his father, who's 70, to have a 45 year old's vitals. Uh, so he's, he's sign me up. <laughs> he's running all these tests on himself and on people he knows to see if he can. Uh, right now achieve immortality but he, what he thinks is uh that it's not he's not going to be successful but he thinks that ai is going to become so intelligent it's going to become super intelligent more intelligent than human beings mm -hmm. and it will figure out how to become 
how to make humans immortal. Oh my God. So that raises the question. He says, um, are we on the cusp of the most world changing event in the entirety of human history? Uh, he plays, well, let me just say, his website is called Project Blueprint. He makes his whole trials and everything transparent okay. for anyone to follow. Uh, and you can like buy his supplements and stuff. But wh where it gets really interesting is when he starts veering into this like more philosophical territory and right. he gets into it with Tucker and Tucker's just like, don't you fear that God is going to strike you down? He's like, not in the least bit. So At he's all. like, yeah, he's like, I don't believe I am like, you oh, know, is that, is, is it, he is doesn't that, believe in God. He doesn't believe oh. in anything except his new thing is don't die. He thinks that that will become the moral imperative of all of humanity. So, uh, Kelly, could you, well, first let's just Yo, look at this picture. You this, this freak? Yeah. So, dude, that's what he used to look like before he started undergoing all these treatments. And now he is he some of his body parts are that of an eighteen year old, even though he's forty six. Okay, like okay. But like he doesn't actually look eighteen, he just looks weird. Okay, yeah, yeah. He went from okay, weird guy to can you show it again, Kelly? Can you show this guy? <laughs> show him again. He, he went, went from, from tech nerd to avatar. To, to just <laughs> translucent like, like, see, skin. Yeah, like, 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 like look okay, on the left, he doesn't look lizard. that healthy. His hair's kind of getting wild. No. Then he got like he looks like the guy in the middle. He looks like the guy from um, um, God. What's that alien movie where they go to another planet? Ethereum. Shit. It's like Star Wars. <laughs> he doesn't Elysium. look good. Prometheus. Elysium. Prometheus. Yeah. Oh, Prometheus. Yeah. Oh, Prometheus. Yeah. Prometheus. Prometheus. He looks like that. By the way, that, no, they, no one knows that. But that's, that was a great. Yeah, looks like a, a, a Fassbender. But uh, dude, I, I go, go ahead because that, that drives me crazy. I don't think anybody like you're messing with God. Your machine is supposed to break down at a certain point, and you're supposed to move on. Wait, he's 46 years old now in that yes. picture in 2024? In the one now where he... What's his you, number? Uh, no, I'm just joking. Well, I know. Yeah, you can reach out to him, I bet. he He's on Twitter. His name is Zero slash DD, as in don't die. Oh, and he, he tweets all the time. He interacts with people. He's, like, totally open about it. He's like, oh, yeah, I inject myself with blood. Like, it's, you know, I'm trying things out. But uh, let's play this clip where he talks to Tucker about what he thinks is going to happen. Uh, okay. If you could start at the 42nd mark. Um, Dude, by the way, I would like, if this guy got hit, hit by a car, that would be so funny, Brady. He just that's what he there. says. He says in the interview, he goes, I'm going to get hit by a bus. That's how I'm going to die. For I'm going to sure. die the most ironic death. <laughs> and he's going to be like this, yeah. don't yeah. die. You're dying, buddy. So at least he has a sense of humor. But, All right, go ahead. Uh, yeah, play this. Save my blood. Any way of knowing about it. Or they'll care about. Yes, that's right. And so if you pose that question from the 25th century, and so that really, for me, creates this clarity of thought. Like if you try to really clear your head of all the noise happening now, what do they say right now that we did as a species in this moment that allowed intelligence to thrive in this part of the galaxy? And this is why I would say is this is when Homo sapiens realized that they reached a technological threshold where the only objective of existence was to continue to exist at the basic level. So this is don't die. That... When AI, when we're on the eve of giving birth to superintelligence, and we have to ask all the basic questions of our existence: Who are we? Why do we exist? How do we operate in society? Do I have a job? Do I don't? Like, what are the answers to these basic questions? And what I'm suggesting is our existence is going to be compressed into one statement that we can all say, which is "Don't die," and "Don't die" is the most played game by everybody on planet earth every second of every day we breathe every few seconds we look both ways before we cross the street we throw out moldy food so don't die is played more than capitalism don't die is played more than religion the most played game in existence and that's the thing we can rally behind I want to see what in this moment. Says. just give a sec it's, it's interesting though i mean the fact that you i think that's partly true but the fact that you have to articulate it suggests it's not entirely true mm. in other words the way that people human beings differ from other animal species is not just language and the imposable thumb it's that humans are the only animal that kill themselves. Okay, mm -hmm. you can pause it there. You need to be convinced. Well, yeah. So, so, so Tucker in this whole interview is like okay. following him, but he's like, but, you know, I don't have to choose to live. That's what makes humans different from animals. I can kill myself, essentially. Easy. You can animals out. never think like that. They operate on pure instinct. So this Brian Johnson guy is trying to say that we can get rid of God, we can get rid of all sources of transcendent meaning. And then, not only that, but death the thing that has given human life its horizon this whole time yeah. like think about it he makes this point everything that we find meaningful in life is in the context of the assumption that we're gonna die yes like 
what's your legacy after you die? Exactly. Uh, what are you going to do while you're alive? Yeah. Um, and, and also, it's all conditioned by the finite realities of life. What am I going to do for a living? How am I going to make food? And then reproduce, because yeah. I'm not going to be oh, immortal. Wow. Yeah. So when all of that goes out the window, and all the questions of what it is to be a human being are returned in completely new form where it's like we actually no longer will know who we are now. Uh -huh. Immortality will change absolutely everything. And it's going to be caused by super intelligence, which he says is going to be reached in this century. So my question to you guys is, do you believe that don't die is a sufficient maxim a sufficient uh new meaning of life or do you think that's nothing like tucker thinks do you think that's do you think that could be a thing to live by because i personally do not what do you think natalie i don't think so and i think it sort of gets into the question of what it actually means to be alive living health versus wellness versus versus longevity it's like i guess hypothetically through his paradigm you could be 150 but have horrific quality of life mm -hmm. right like you're not able to do anything you you have Alzheimer's, like you're just not with it, but you're still technically living. Yeah, you're just like a, a piece of flesh walking right? around like and a I think wild heartbeat. That that sort of like undergirds a lot of his mentality, which is he wants to prolong longevity, but I just don't think that that's biologically possible. And frankly, I think he's just sort of like a, a weird, you said he sells supplements, like marketing spin on transhumanism with a little touch of AI, which is the idea that like, I also just think it's kind of narcissistic and egotistical. It's like, sir, well, you don't need like, to live forever. Yeah, <laughs> well, like, well, like, we don't want you to live forever. Yeah. Yeah. It's also, you're weird. <laughs> it's like that movie Goldie Hawn where those witches and they're trying to patch each other up. Yeah, it's, it's horrible. With Bruce Willis and he's the scientist and they keep coming to him to, to patch them up and drink that magic potion. I know exactly what, that's what that yeah. feels like where they fall down the stairs and all their but they're still alive. No, their it's, limbs like, are it's, everywhere. Yeah, it's like zombies. What, what, what are we going to say? I was going to guess Hocus Pocus, but I don't think Is that's the right movie. It might be, but Rob, how do you feel about this? Honestly, is of Eastwood. Rob, I'm getting to the point where I'm mid. I'm. I, I don't know if I'm at a midlife crisis, right? But I'm at midlife. Oh, Rob, I, Rob, I've realized we're both, I'm like, Rob, we're both there. I'm like yeah. 37, there. and I start seeing. Well, you see, there's all these surprising stories coming out about uh, the increasing cancer rates uh, among younger people, yeah. people my age. And we which, can't talk about it, but go ahead. Yeah, and, and you know, they, it's getting to the point for me where I'm like, okay, I, I maybe have another 30, 40 years left on this earth. What do I want to accomplish in that time? Yeah. But knowing that I have 30 to 40 years left is making me and giving me drive to get things done that I never thought I would do. Like, I want to go skydiving. I want to go bungee jumping. These are things that, like, I'm like, all right, I have a limited amount of time on this planet. Let's go take advantage of that now. I can't imagine just continuing to keep extending my life. I feel like I would never go and do the things that I want to go do mm -hmm. because I'd keep putting it off. No, I'm going to live to 150. I don't need like, to go and do the these things. There's no rush. Exactly. Everything would become there's no rush. And then also... If super intelligence figures out how to produce food easily so it becomes free, then there's no reason to go to work. Then there's no reason to, like, cover the news, and there's no reason— Like, everything would just go out the window. So why the hell is this guy trying to do this? And life is so precious. The idea that in this entire solar system, we are the only actual living life forms on a planet. Us and the animals that are on this planet— yeah. It it see it when you know how big the universe is. It would take a complete miracle for this to happen, yeah. to be oh. at this stage of life, and then to try and take science and and excuse my language, fuck with it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, that's not the natural thing. What's natural is like where we're at now and the natural progression of humanity. And I feel like when you start doing things like this, you start tinkering, and you open boxes you don't want to. Yeah, and if you're, and if you're in a relationship and you hate your wife, and you're like, oh, I got to see you forever, <laughs> bitch. Yeah. years? Oh, no. No, but but uh, going to my point, and uh, just like... Uh, that's all. There's a positive that's spin a on that. I think it's like there's so many <laughs> people are... I love that. Natalie has a good sense <laughs> yeah. of humor. Well, Natalie, you're right that it's so narcissistic because it's like you think that you are worth just being around forever yeah. and not giving another generation of people a chance. And like I find people on average should be very interesting in their individuality. Yeah. So I want to see more individuals with more personalities. I don't want to just see the same people who are alive right now just forever and there be no extra humans, oh, future God. humans. Yeah. Could you imagine if Hillary like, Clinton continues yeah, to live for 70 years? I don't know, bro. Yeah. It's, it's like, a punishment on I, society. I don't know, though. Yeah. I would kind of like to see Michael Jordan play forever. Okay, yeah. okay. That's we can me. pick and shoot. But here's but. my thing, but, but, and Rob, and you nailed <laughs> this. Just it's just, it's these, it's now it's human beings starting to get way too creative and way too smart with this science, just like with Mark Zuckerberg, that he lost 
hundreds of billions of dollars to thank God for this stupid meta shit where you thought people wanted to be plugged in to some system and live their lives and just take drugs all day and be no 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 bro this is the beauty of life and this is why God is such an amazing being he created us to live to experience to die and move on and go somewhere else and go somewhere better and I think that type of stuff I'm anti that don't get me wrong I take vitamins not a hundred I take like you know <laughs> pretty, 15 pretty, I take and close how many, how many doctors yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't yeah, Imagine having 30 doctors where you're like about to go like this and you're like, hey, doc, is this? And he's like, no, it's in plastic. But I think the beauty of is passing on, moving on to something better. I don't think we're supposed to stay here forever. Anyway, guys, uh, Shane, great topic. Uh, moving great on. Topic. Brady. Yes. Caitlin Clark. They yep. just, she just won the championships? She did not. She did not. <laughs> no. It's all right. It's okay. But, we'll get there. Well, she won a game to get to, and then she, she was in the she was in the she was in the championships. Game. Brady, go. Brady yeah. will explain. <laughs> you see, this is the reason why I love Sports. I love Vinny because Vinny's got it all when it comes to politics. And then out the gate, he just goes. But, 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 championship game? But, no. But, 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 but Brady, go because I'll talk about it after. Go ahead. Um, Caitlin Clark. She's been. She's not been in any like hot water per se. Is it snowing it like, on the court? <laughs> Kelly, <laughs> her shattering the backboard. Oh, shattered my back. Kelly with the freaking yeah, graphic. I don't know. I didn't know if I pulled up that graphic, but it looks like. No, I love it. Look at it, Kelly. Kelly's, Put it back on. Kelly's, Yo, Kelly's amazing There's with the There's the graphics. one I got, but this is the one that Kelly did, which Kelly's is way amazing, better. Kelly's amazing, bro. Look at uh, that's Oh, that's a dunk! Backboard. Yes. Backboard. That's uh, my also, girl. Oh, also, also, it's, also, it's also, Gatorade. That's <laughs> not Caitlin Clark dunking, just for FYI. Oh, uh, yeah, FYI. Okay. We'll go, Brady, not, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not go. Caitlin Clark dunking. Um, Rob, you can probably help me out a little bit on the subject as well, because she's not only um, the best female basketball player right now, but she's the best basketball player, I'd say, in total right now what, that's playing the game. Um, Male and female? I would say, in terms of like excitement, uh, obviously there's LeBron James. The hype, obviously there's um, Joker. Obviously there's Luca. But I'm saying, in terms of her skill set, what she's doing as uh, a female athlete right now is phenomenal. And yeah. it's wonderful say, that it's happening now correct. in female athletics right. where females are, and I, I, I hate to be that guy, but females are under attack by this LGBTQ movement right. where they're making trans people play in women's sports, right. and it's dominating the headlines. It's great to see an actual woman yeah. in a woman's yeah. sport dominate the news Also, cycle. if you want to know my all trans team, I have a show called The Mouthpiece. Uh, it's, yeah, uh, The Mouthpiece. It's on Valuetainment. Uh, Valley Famous Sports. Holly I have Floyd. I have an all trans team, and I break it down. It's actually enlightening. Right, and LeBron James is on it. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, but the thing that's so great about uh, Caitlin Clark: one, she's dynamic and she's so fun to watch. She shoots. You said the other, you said over there. Uh, she looks kind of like Steph Curry a little bit, or no, that was Robert. So she shoots a little bit like Steph Curry. She shoots literally from half court. No other female is kind of doing what she does. She's broken all the barriers. She broke the uh, all-time scoring record by Pete Maravich. Can we pull that up, Kelly? Real this quick? is the this is the shot. This is her shot. Yeah. Uh, okay, I want to see where she's shooting because you're saying she got some freaking. Yeah, she has range. She's All literally right. shooting from your your uh, neighbor's garage, dude. All like right. it's out of control. Go ahead, go for it, Cal. Yeah, go for it. Watch this, and this is for her to break the scoring the audio for Pete get, oh, Maravich. Oh, oh, no, you probably get oh, pretty, bow. Oh, wow. Damn, you probably get dinged because of the audio. Because oh no, talking so I'm happy Kelly didn't play. Good. Um, so yeah, so Caitlin Clark right, with that shot right there broke Pete, Bar Pete Maravich's record. By the way, Vince Chilly needed five more points. She had 15 points at this. She finished the game with 41 points total. Damn. So the girl's nasty. Yeah, she's nasty, but she also went to the championship game, and those girls from South Carolina were undefeated. Mm -hmm. The whole team was undefeated for the whole for the whole season, and they won the championship. But she did put up a uh, good fight against them as well. Mm -hmm. A couple different, a couple other things before we get to the next clip. Um, she holds the record for the most sold out games, in in uh, college basketball, men and women combined. Any money? Like question? I don't know how's. I, so I the arena seats 30,000 30, seats thirty thousand thirty thousand people. She doesn't get a cut of that. Hold on, we're getting there. Oh, um, then she brings home she brings home uh, she brings home more cash than he, any other women's basketball player nil deals. Okay, um, she makes over three point one million dollars from State Farm. Are you from, yeah just for in a college, college athlete? College. Good for her. Just in college. Good for you, Caitlin. Just in college. By the way, she's not even going to make. She won't even make seventy five percent of that going into the WNBA. But because she just keeps failing and saying college. No, but here's the thing too. Here's the thing. Okay, so she has endorsements by State Farm, Nike, Gatorade, just to name a couple, just the big ones, right? The huge ones. Um, it makes her the highest earning women's basketball player ever and fourth highest earning player behind Bronny James and Shadur Sanders, which is Deion Sanders' Dude. son who plays at Colorado right now, who's crushing it. She's the truth. She's the best. And by the way, I don't like women's basketball. You know me. I'm a sports guy. Yeah. I watched every single game she played and I wanted her to win the championship, or um, but she but she didn't. It didn't okay. happen that way. But she's All won right. in other aspects of it. Dave Portnoy of Barstool Sports 
offered her $10 million to come play in their rec league. Which $10 no one's, million. Which no one's going to go watch that shit, right? No one's yeah. going to watch it, but $10 million is still more money than the WNBA is going to pay her. Of course. Also, the Big Three, Ice Cube's company, paid said they'll pay her $5 million to go play in his Big Three. But okay. also, With men? With men. Yeah, and by the way, she would crush She'd probably do well. The thing, the, thing, the, thing, the, the thing, though, about the three-on-three three is it's half court. She would just sit there and just shoot, shoot goal, yeah. threes yeah. all day, yeah. right? And some of them, it's a three-point, and then there's a four-point, too. So she'd just be racking up four points the whole time, right? Um, okay, with that said, she sells out arenas, like I said, 30,000 people on the regular that come to see her at the arenas. The WNBA, guess what their, what their attendance is on an average night? Six. Nine. Nine people. Nine thousand people. Oh, yes. no, no, no. <laughs> okay. Nine thousand. Like that that's crazy. That actually, yeah. nine thousand people. Yep. So here's the thing. Here's here's the thing, and we'll get to the meat and potatoes here. So the controversy is, these talking heads now are coming out. Paul Pierce on Skip Bayless is undisputed. Jay Williams on Let's Talk About It. Um, even uh, Dania Taras. I'm going to mess her name up. Tarasi. Uh, Tarasi uh, and uh, Sue Bird came out, and they're ripping on her too. So let's just start with. The Paul Pierce one on Skip Bayless real quick. So this is him admitting that he was wrong, but then he's going to show what you what he, he say about. He's You'll not- see what he actually oh, says. Okay. This is him admitting it. Go for it, Kelly. Got a couple things I want to clear up. I said some things on Undisputed the other day that came out probably the wrong way, maybe offended some people. We saw a white girl in Iowa do mm-hmm. it to a bunch of black girls. Mm-hmm. Well, of course. That, that yeah. made it like, oh, <laughs> that gave my respect. That gave my respect. I, I hear you. You're like, right. that's like, oh, she didn't do this. To, to uh, some other little white girls that was over mm-hmm. here. And, oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. Always got to be about race. She did yep. it to some <laughs> girls from, from LSU yeah, who we did. thought were some dogs. Defending champs. Defending yeah. champs mm-hmm. and put them on her knee and spanked them. Now, you got a predominantly okay. Okay. white so here's where squad versus a predominantly black Well, obviously, I mean, he had so here's, here here it is. So here's where he's getting into yeah. now, black and white. Where I come from, when we hoop, and then you got to look at this. The game of basketball is predominantly black. So when you have a white player comes in and kills, for example, Luca, I looked at white man can't jump. Like the movie when Billy Doyle came in there, came in the hood, <laughs> killed. You know, initially he was looked at really like, oh, he can't he hoop. Set up. That he was he can't set up. hoop with the brothers in the hood. Uh, no, nah, we're going to go up, at, go at him. Once he started killing, he earned that respect. Now, I've always respected Caitlin Clark, but when I seen her do it against a more athletic team, team that's what's considered the villains, defending champs, I was like, all right, if she ball out versus them and get the dub, my hat's off to her. Not that it wasn't before, but it was like another respect. You get right. another respect right. though, Stop as it. a so, white player. So that's so just one controversy. So now they're pulling know. out the, because so she's making so much money and people are starting to get pissed off. And also now they're trying to make it, I think it's, I think social media is now to try to make it, how, how can we spin this? How can we make this juicy? Oh, white versus black, right? Um, she's making more money now than the black athletes as well. So here comes Jay Williams, who's also another a talking head for sports talking about how if she doesn't win a championship too if she doesn't win a championship um which she didn't that she's not the greatest female basketball player ever which is complete bullshit with a better lack of words um she's the best basketball player so that's another controversy you'll see i'll tie this in the okay and this is, by the way, Stephen A. Smith. Diana Taurasi has always will. been a real one. She's real. She's great. She's phenomenal. She's all those things. But her authenticity, I love this woman. She don't play. And she come, oh. and, and her attitude is, excuse me, it's another level. And she let the world know. What to look for. Caitlin's coming. There's more than just that that are coming. What will the league have in store for them when they get there? But I'll explain this in a minute. Look, SVP, um, <laughs> this reality is, her hate. is coming. Okay. <laughs> you know, there's there's <laughs> levels to this thing, and that's just life. We all went through it. Of course. Um, and you see it on the NBA side, it, and you're going to see it on this side, where, you know, they, you look superhuman playing against 18-year-olds, but you're going to come with some grown oh, women that have been playing great. professional basketball for a long time. Not saying that it's not going to translate, because when you're great at what you do, you're just going to get better. But there is going to be a transition period where you're going to have to Let's give yourself some grace as a rookie. No. All right, you and, stop uh, it. So when she know, goes, she take goes this is going to translate, or she goes, there's levels to this thing last time i checked homegirls making so much money and this talking head is making what i don't know how much money she's making just doing this super little talk show but totally but i'm saying like 
the hate and the division from someone that's doing something so great uh, is 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 like it doesn't make sense to me because what what is the hate for? You should just we should embrace greatness, right? Greatness. So because because guess LLC. what? Just her playing and being good doesn't sell. Right. Being, bringing the racial aspect of anything gets people going. Starts to have people talking. It can't just be on her own merit that she's just extremely talented and she's kicking that's right ass could you imagine right. if i said okay right. chess is a predominantly white sport but this little black girl came in yeah. and beat all these white girls and i didn't yeah. take her serious until the second the black yeah. girl beat the white girl and all of yeah. a sudden oh, you're, you know you're done now i'm giving her respect well then i would be deemed a racist 100% yeah. racist. but guess what guess who else went through this tiger woods it was oh, a whole course. different situation tiger woods played golf and it was a predominantly all white uh, all white oh, sports. What do you mean? He was the they wouldn't even let him play at the Masters when he was uh, 17 years old mm -hmm. because he was black. Yeah. So they had to change it all up. And I'm sorry, it wasn't the flipped. Masters. It was uh, it was the it was the Open? U.S. Open. Yes. And um, so what I'm trying to say is, when people are great like she is, she's a complete complete fen phenom. My questions for you, right? my question for you is, is this hate on a jealousy level, or is this race bait for clicks from talking heads on TV? And do you think also this? Actually, this is more question for. Uh, all, all you guys, actually, but um, let's start with the first one. Do you think this is hate on a jealousy level, or do you think this is race bait clicks for for social media? I don't necessarily think they're mutually exclusive. I have to say, sports is not my forte, let right. alone uh, women's sports, especially women's basketball. I feel like it's only a punchline of a joke. Um, but I was kind of confused because I kept seeing her name and controversy come around, and I hadn't really dug into it because I didn't really care. Right. But I still don't really understand what the controversy is, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It just sort of seems like a non-issue. Um, and I think with all the issues that women's sports are facing right now, it seems like, like you sort of said in the opening of the segment, it's nice to have an actual female athlete actually doing well right and i think these talking heads have just been so used to like always finding some identity-based issue to and they make can't it find thing. it now yeah that it's like a a gut visceral reaction and they can't find it so they're like well we'll go to the race oh it's a class thing it's a money thing and it's just i don't know maybe it goes back to the brian johnson narcissism yeah ego totally thing, but. and there hasn't been hype around a, a single player since lebron james since LeBron James, wow. the hype hasn't been. And also, they're moving around arenas for her in the WNBA because that's what they're predicting. She's going to sell out. She's going to be a complete effing rock star. Um, it's, it's, like the, it's like the Eminem effect. It's like, here's this white boy from Detroit, 8 Mile, just ridiculous. And becomes rap, yeah. probably, what, top five lyrical rappers of all time. I think it's, um, like, it's, it's obviously, it's uncommon to be like oh whoa this dude is up there i'm talking about the greatest of all time yeah. the way that it's looking with this girl she has a fantastic future she's nasty right now i, I don't think it's it, it's it's cool i mean i think it's okay to be like oh wow she's she's a, a white girl good for her she's kicking ass but not to be like man this white the way that paul pierce set it up I, I i'm not a big i'm not a big fan of that giving her credit yeah but trying to be like man we can't like that attitude, I'm not. I'm not cool. Nat, with. Nat, let me ask you a question. Do you think that we'll ever see in our lifetime a, a female NBA basketball player? Do you think it's actually possible, Rob? Do you think not it's trans? Actually possible? I mean, biological, actual female basketball, biological play in the NBA. I think we'll see uh, a trans shoots? woman first before we see yeah. an actual wait, wait, so biologically I, born. I'm woman confused. Before. A trans. I always. I, I, I'm horrible at this. And so am I. <laughs> so you're saying a, a guy that was born a man. Chops everything off and plays in the WNBA? No, I'm saying Dom. in the NBA, either way, a woman going to man or man going to woman, oh. I see that happening because I feel like the NBA has to continue this progressiveness that a lot of major sports companies have, with the exception of the UFC. The UFC is so, the yeah. one where you I, go up and talk yeah. that shit I actually, no matter what. I agree with that more. I think we'll see a man as a woman in the NBA. <laughs> Yeah, I think you want right. to see an actual. You want to know my thing when it comes to board. sports, especially basketball. What I can I can give two shits about <laughs> anything when it comes to basketball because Le by the way, LeBron has made it unwatchable and he's the face of the NBA. I can't even watch the NBA. Here's my thing: I love people with Down syndrome. One of my best friends, Artie, you know from California, has love Down Artie. syndrome. I think just because because sports at the end of the day is meaningless. In the scheme of life, it's a distraction, no but, matter what. But if yeah. you just look at it as it's just one more example where merit is being trashed in favor of identity, then you see it's like it's it's sports is a good uh, weather indicator for what's happening in the rest of society. Totally. Yeah. And people not standing for the flag or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's you know, what you're seeing here is 
basically DEI lashing out at just pure merit where well, that's not supposed to happen. That's not according to the script. It's just like, well, they're good. So do you have a problem with it? Yeah. yeah. What happened to just right? the, someone just being, being just good? Absolutely phenomenal. Isn't that what it's supposed to be it's about? Wrote down, uh, and Pat talks about this a lot, the hero making machine where we have a problem actually celebrating heroes in this country. And what you I do. wrote down is that we need to honor heroes, not saying that she's a hero, like, you know, first responder or, but there are women, there are young girls that are looking up to Kate and Clark oh, as yeah. a role just model. Excellent. She had yes. excellence. So why are we not celebrating that? Why are we finding ways to villainize to make that? it a problem or find exactly. a Guess way what? To... And going, going, going to my point. Jealousy. Because I, I know people at home are probably like, why did they start talking about people with Down syndrome? And then we just stopped. I love people with Down syndrome. <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a big brother to one of them. He lives in, his name is Artie. He lives in Vegas right now. I think just to spice up basketball to make it even more interesting, every team in the NBA, I'm being dead serious, they have to have on the court one person with Down syndrome the entire time. On each, every team. Do they have to be playing? Of course they do. And guess how we roll, Brady? If they score, and I mean, they're not going to, don't take the money. points. They win the game. <laughs> if, guys, be honest. What did oh. you, I want to know in the chat. Would you, if you're not a basketball fan, would you watch? No. Umberto's going to put this in there. Would you watch? I bet you I'm going to say, they're going to say yes. Would you watch the NBA <laughs> if every team had one kid with Down syndrome? And if they score, the game is over. It's like, like, hey. Remember Rock and Jock from MTV back in yes. the 90s? Where they'd have a basketball hoop and then they'd have one above it that was 25 yes! points. And yeah. then an even higher yes. one that was 100 points. And I, like, Pauly Shore. By the way, I thought that was <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dan Cortez. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Dan yeah. Cortez. All right, Brady, you good? We're good. All right, guys. Yep. Um, yeah, I think she's nasty. I actually want to see her play live, and hopefully next year she's incredible. All right, uh, Indiana. Last story, guys. Rob G. Um, Rob, is America really divided? Yes. Yeah, so yesterday I was digging in, and the story that I'm going to do on Friday, I am super looking forward to. It's about George Soros buying up massive amounts of radio companies in the United States. There was a story that came out to, uh, late last night about an NPR whistleblower oh, who was yeah. talking. Did you see that? Yes, it's about really how cool. NP NPR uh, was so biased leading into the 2016 election that they did everything they could to undermine Trump. It's going to be a super yeah. interesting story, and I cannot wait to get to it, but I haven't done enough research yeah so i went hey let me find something a little bit lighter and talk about that what we continue to see in the news in our algorithms on social media the podcasts that we follow youtube everything that we see is that the united states of america is no longer united and that we are divided but is that perception or is that reality uh, there's an article that was put out by Axios yesterday, Behind the Curtain, America's Reality Distortion Machine. And what this article is about is about what's called distortion bubbles. These are bubbles of reality that we're all living in based on what we're consuming as far as news, media, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. And whether or not that is the actual representation of reality or it is the representation of the spin by media companies and we perceive that as truth. Mm -hmm. uh, what they did was they went and they found they did a poll of uh, 2,000 people, a new poll by AP and the NORC Center for Public Affairs Research shows a striking amount of agreement on very big topics among, uh, I'm sorry, roughly 90% of Americans agree on the next uh, five uh, fundamental rights. The right to vote, the right to equal protection under the law, the right to freedom of religion, the right to freedom of speech, and the right to privacy. So if we can agree on, 90% of Americans can agree on five of the most functioning or most important fundamental of yeah. uh, being a citizen of the United States, then what are we actually fighting about? And according to this article, uh, what they are saying is that we're all living in these bubbles and what we're getting is we're getting news perceived as reality. But what it actually is, is spins from the extremes, the extreme right, the extreme left who are taking information, twisting it to fit their narrative, putting it out into the algorithms. And then people like us consume that. And we see that we don't investigate further. And and this is where I think. Uh, independent journalism will separate people who do this from people who just consume. A lot of people will see that on their feed. They'll take that story as, okay, this is what happened. I'm going to make my opinion on it without actually clicking on the story, reading past the headline, investigating and researching, yeah. reading the opposition on that particular news story, Trump on abortion. Instead of just reading Fox News, go and read CNN. Read MSNBC and then make your decision based on both viewpoints. But what they're saying now is that the majority of Americans live in this perceived reality that is not actually real. It's just what the media, 
what the algorithms tell us is real and we don't investigate further. So what I wanted to talk to you guys about, yeah. and I think Kelly, you have a chart. Could we show the chart? Uh, yeah, we'll go, to, we'll go to Natalie to see what Nat thinks. Share of U.S. adults who say the following rights and freedoms are important to the country's identity. 91% of people think everyone should have the right to equal protection under the law. 91% of people think that everybody should have the right to vote. 90% of people believe in the freedom of speech. 88% of people the right to privacy. 84% of people the freedom of religion. 83% of people the right... Uh, to assemble peacefully, 77% of people believe in the freedom of the press, and 54 This is the most controversial uh, which argument the, of which our lifetime. Like Only 54%? Come on, we're American. Well, the ha right to keep and bear arms. So half, well, and by the way, the, the one that said freedom of press, 77%, that means, what, 33% yeah, are just no. hardcore liberals that are like, we don't want nobody well, to learn okay, shit. So the, the, the light pink is somewhat important to them, and then the yeah, very yeah. far, so you're talking about, what, like six percent of the population that but think about, but that's don't still care like, about the freedom of press. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. It's a t to live in that idea where you shouldn't be able to express or write news yeah. or have freedom of speech. But they believe yeah. in freedom of speech. So it's like maybe they think freedom of press means like freedom of report something however you want, like even if it's not true. So yeah, you, you don't know how people So Rob, what's your question? Question. question? I want to know. I want to know, do you guys actually think that we're living in a divided United States of or divided States of America or are we actually in the United States of America? Because when I look at what we're currently going through when it comes to cultural issues, social issues, and political issues. I, I've said this before on this podcast. I think we listen to the extremes and we ignore people who are in the middle because the people who are in the middle aren't making the most noise. It's the people on the far right, the far left that make that noise. We pay attention to those people and then that's what the media reports on. But I think everybody, if you could get them to sit down and have a conversation with one another, yep. I think we're closer together in a lot of our beliefs and uh, and the rights that we hope for all Americans than the people who are on the outside and the extremes, but we listen to the extremes only because they make more What do you noise. think, Natalie? Lot to unpack, but for Lot. starters, unpack it. <laughs> for starters, I think setting the stage with your worldview, which is the idea that it's not just like right versus left, Republican versus Democrat, is certainly true. Whether you couch it as the uniparty versus whatever, or kind of everyday Americans, the average Americans versus kind of the more elite ruling class, but I always find this sort of narrative coming from the mainstream media to be sort of peculiar in the sense that they have the monopoly over cultural institutions over more or less the cultural narratives the programming that you see coming from mainstream media outlets and i actually think that they are very anti-division but i think for the opposite reason that we are in other words i think in some ways division though it can sort of have a pejorative connotation i think it's great that there's diversity in viewpoints right it's wonderful that we can have discussions like this but you know the person who wrote that story for axios and their corporate paymasters they don't like division because they don't want people to be able to come to viewpoints that differ from their narrative. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think that their discourse on division is, is sort of interesting because they don't want shows like this to exist. They don't want people to be able to formulate opinions, whether it's about COVID, the origins of COVID, Ukraine aid, China, that sort of stray from the mainstream. So that's why when I hear these people all up in arms about, oh, we're so divided, we're so divided. It's like, well, you guys are A, contributing to it, I would argue the most, and, and B, you guys have waged, I mean, billion dollar government scale censorship efforts to make sure that division can't happen because you don't want us to hold viewpoints that go against the mainstream narrative. So I always get sort of like cagey when I hear all this talk about division, 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 because I feel like they almost bring it up to create more division. I, 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 I agree because uh, I, I, oh, I talk... I, I get exhausted with talking about the fact that these people are the one percent, maybe even a little bit less. Yeah, we are the ninety-nine percent. But because of this, the this division that they are talking, yeah, Axios and all these MSNBC, and I, I genuinely believe that they are the enemy of the people, and I, I mean that from the bottom, from the depth of my heart. They are. They want us <laughs> hating each other. They want us killing each other. They want us stupid. They want us uneducated. They want us unhealthy because that's how they keep that power. Before I came in here, my mom was asking who's going to be on. I said, Mom, this amazing girl, her name is Natalie. She's smart. I, I said that she's like, Vinny, why, why do, why, because she looked into you too. She's like, why is, why do they want us all, fight? I go, Mom, because the moment we realize that all the surface stuff, black, white, tall, short, girl, gay, straight, none of that shit matters and it's about humanity and it's about us and if we stopped all together and just turned and went, wait a minute, you got, 
We have all the power. We literally have all the power, and we're letting them get away with it. I think you, you nailed it. This divisive BS that all of them are doing, they're just adding more to it because I think at the end of the day, when you scrape away all that BS, we're all, we all have the same common things. Rob, you just showed that list. People want to be able to say what they want. People want to be able to go to you know, whatever religion they want. People want to be able to, to, to have guns. I mean, half of us, us want to have freaking guns because we're not stupid. Right, Rob? Uh, it says in this article, even those of us in the media who are paid to marinate in news and trends and reporting, they find it hard to determine if something that seems big on X or partisan media is moving the needle with more than a few loud mouths. A big reason for the problem in differentiating X, Facebook, and other platforms are powered by people with the biggest followings who often are the most provocative, partisan, and pugilistic. The algorithms then amplify it. Like, I, I, I agree. I don't think that the, the media helps. Um, I think it's the algorithms. I think it's social media. I think it's, like, I, I X has not been decided for me yet. I like, what? like I like the idea that Elon Musk bought it as a platform for free speech, and I hope that he keeps it as such. Yes. But that being said, every single social media platform that is currently available to you to use or mainstream for yeah. you to use have been compromised by the federal government. All every of them, single right. one. All of them. Instagram, Facebook, yeah. Twitter. At, yeah. At, He's, at, well, yeah, ex Elon bought it. Ex and, and, and look what they're trying to do to him. They're, they've been literally trying to destroy him. What's that? Was there a bill? Uh, what's the bill that they're trying to do to try to circumvent where the president can uh, determine if something's a foreign uh, social media thing? It was something. The oh, TikTok, yeah, yeah. Are you talking the about TikTok ban, yeah. which yeah. in the bill is something to get rid of. X because well, at, foreign, yeah. at least at least Rob and I and I got you at least X and by the way when people by the way do you guys remember the the government tried to have under Biden a disinformation board yeah, yeah. the government was gonna have a board to tell you what they think is You're real doing. or false thank God Joke. that shit was disbanded before it even started but at least X it's like guys all the chips are on the fi uh, table and you nailed it Rob why don't you guys not you guys I'm saying the, the people out there. Don't be lazy. Scratch the surface. Read into the damn story. Don't just click and be like, hey, bloodbath. Donald Trump said that there's going to be a bloodbath, and then these morons go on all these freaking shows. And by the way, and here's the truth. Do you know, how, you know what the percentage of idiots, morons that don't scratch the surface that are walking on right now that still believe right now that Donald Trump said if he wins, there's going to be a bloodbath? I've heard that talking point from people two days ago online that they were like, he said he's going to kill us. If we don't do what he wants. Well, and if they can censor the information, if they can hold it back, and they've done that, can they also, uh, if they can censor it, can they also propagate it? Can they also put it out there? So, See, okay, not? this story will start a fight. Let's put this out. Let's yep. let's uh, advance this narrative with this story. Because if, like, we always talk about good and evil, right? I'm not all bought in on the Lord. I, I know that a lot of people are, and, and great for you. Um, do you believe in God? I believe in good and evil, and and that's okay. a far way for me to come as a human because I never really gave it that much spirituality, that much thought. I never didn't grow up in a Christian household or went to church as a child, um, but the older that I get, the more I see that there is clearly evil out there. And if there is clearly evil that has not won, then that must mean that there are good forces. So if they can suppress information and they can keep you from information, can they also do the opposite and put that information in front of you with the sole purpose to divide and conquer? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where I believe we're at. And did you did you guys see the, it was on, I, I forgot who did the, I don't know if it was James O'Keefe, but it was a investigation, a CIA officer, former FBI, both, uh, he, he I love these guys. It's like gay guys that go to lunches that they don't realize they're getting recorded. Yeah, they how just feel the app, by the way. So stupid. So dumb. Uh, he said, uh, "We can put anyone in jail, set them up. We can call a nudge. We can we can make stories how we want." FBI did what we wanted with Alex Jones. Uh, took his money away, chopped his legs off. Uh, estimated twenty uh, uh, under our undercover FBI agents were on January six. He goes, "We could pull out stories." He goes, "We could em uh, embellish news, fake social media, and really get people mad." This is a. Uh, uh, a CIA officer, former FBI, FBI agent, boasting because he has no idea. It's all a, a, it's all a yeah. freaking game, bro. Operation Mockingbird, all the way, I think, in the early sure. 70s. Yeah. Uh, the CIA has been 
the Operation Mockingbird was basically the CIA getting like a hundred different news outlets on the same page to be like, when we want you to push a story, you're going to push a story. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And that's been in place since. Yeah. Can I just say one thing? Quick, on we Friday, go. I will be pushing the story of George Soros buying up radio companies across the United States as a way for him to uh, control the narrative and put out propaganda. And Six, we'll do that on Friday. I think it's like 60 of them. Right? He bought 60 some of them. Well, and now he's a buying lot. more. Oh, okay, more. great. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Natalie, thank you so much. You are a breath of fresh air. Thank you for I appreciate you. Um, I'm going to get all you guys' socials and everything after. Guys, I am performing. I think Brady might as well. Adam's going to perform. Everybody from Valuetainment is going to be at the Miami Improv this Thursday. The show is at 8. It's almost sold out. Guys, please show up earlier. It's going to be a madhouse. It's Miami. You guys know how it is. It's going to be an amazing show. I'm calling the Valuetainment uh, Takeover. Please, guys, click on the link. Get tickets. I would love to have you guys come there. I'm going to meet everybody, take photos, do all that. Natalie, please do me a favor, sweetie. Look in the camera. Tell everybody where they can find you, your socials, and what you're working on, please. You can follow me basically everywhere that I'm not banned at <laughs> Natalie G. Winters. Wait, let, let, her say, let her say it clear. Say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, at Natalie G. Winters. And I also have a clothing brand that's all made here in the United States. No Chinese Communist Party slave labor involved yeah. that you can go to at she's so right dot co, not dot com. I love it. I love it. Brady. Uh, um, yeah, I'll uh, let's see. I'll be um, hopefully I'm going to be down there watching Vinny do yep. his thing, yep. and then also please check out our new sports show on Value Tainment Sports called The Mouthpiece. Um, it's me and our my buddy Chris Mano doing the show. We have reels. We have a lot of um, sports in depth stuff, and also we laugh on the show too. We do some kind of comedy stuff here and there too. Nice. Also, uh, if you like art, I'm also an artist. Yes. I do art at BradyMatthewsArt.com. A lot of pop art. I do Amazing. a lot of celebrity stuff like that. Oh, I love it. By the way, he, real talk, Multi Brady's a freaking artist. Robbie. Uh, Rob Show TV on all socials. R O B B Show TV. And Rob will be there performing for sure. Oh, wonderful. I'm, cool. Yeah. No, you're on the damn show. Shane, talk to us with your sexy ass beard. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Uh, all my links are in the <laughs> description of this video. Uh, just one link leads to my link tree. I got Twitter, Instagram, and I'm going to start fans. running on Substack. Only Not only fans yet, it's in the works. Uh, but <laughs> wow. no, but uh, VT.com is where Connor and I write our articles. And uh, yeah, check me out there. And I want to give a quick shout out to Kelly, one of the best producers ever. Jorge, yeah, yeah, yeah. Roberto, Jeremy's Jorge. in the back. Robert, I know you're back there. And guys, to all the people that are watching, the new people, the subscribers, okay. I can't express how much I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Make sure you subscribe. If you haven't, click the notification bell. We will be back Friday, same time, 6 p.m., Kelly. Guys, God bless you. Take care of each other, and I'll see you guys soon. Peace and love.